Hello. In the last video we created a basic bouncing ball in uh, Maya 2013. If um, you did not see that video, please click on the link below. It's going to be in the description and I'm probably going to insert it below the video here. So what we've got at the moment, just press play, we've got a ball that's bouncing through a hoop. And we've also gone into the animation editor, the graph editor, and edited the curve of the ball bouncing so that it has a bit more impact when it hits the ground. So we believe that it's struggling a little bit to hit there. So going to stop that animation. What we're going to do next is we are going to get the ball to squash when it hits the ground. So yeah, it takes a while for this to stop and play because I'm recording at the same time. So to do that, I'm first of all going to go into the four view. We're going to be adding a deformer called squash. And we're also going to use set during keys for a little bit of that later. Take your ball back to zero. Nice zero there. Then press shift and A to make sure everything is aligned in the right place. I'm actually going to zoom into the ball here. Press F. F on all these views. Just pull out a bit there. There we go. So we've got some nice viewpoints here. The main one I'm going to be looking at is the side one down here, or the front. So actually, I'm just going to press space, go into this view. Remember, you can always just press the space bar and just go quickly. Remember, you just got to give it a good whack. Don't hold it down. If you hold it down, you get all these menus, the deformers, everything that's on here, but just at an instant. You can also click on Maya, and switch to perspective, top, front, side view. So you can switch to any of these just by holding down the space bar and then holding down the left button on your mouse and just dragging to whichever view you want. But I'm quite happy where I am at the moment. So we're going to be adding a deformer to our ball. So to do that, make sure you're in the animation menu. Click on create deformer, nonlinear, squash. It's right there. So with this handle, I'm going to click on show manipulate tools because this is going to manipulate our shape. And we can see we've got one of the top, middle, bottom, and this extra one on the side. If I click on this one on the side and drag it, we can see that it squashes the ball. Now, my only problem with that is, is that squashing the ball from the middle, if it's going to hit the ground, it's going to squash from the bottom, so you can see it's doing it from the middle. I'm not really happy about that. So I'm just going to press Control Z and put it back to the shape that it was. So now I'm going to move this down to the bottom of the ball. So I'm going to use my Y transit and just put it to zero, but the scale of it is a bit too thin there. So I'm actually going to scale it up. Just so it touches the top there, maybe a bit more. I'll make this 2.5. Oop, that's that should be two. That should be two, and this one 4.2. There we go. It's always nice to have nice round numbers in there. Oop. Try to make sure I click on it. So now if I click the deformers there. Well the mini piece tool. And I select the handle. I can now squash the ball, so it looks like it's squashing, squash, squash. You have to use, you have to say the sounds with it, squash. So you see it's squashing from the bottom there, and it just looks, for me, that little bit realistic. It's those tiny little touches that really make your animation come to life. And if you get into the habit of caring about these little touches now, you're going to go, you're going in the right direction. So I'm just going to put that back to... Control Z. If you want to put it back to zero, in your channel box with the handle selected, we've got input squash. If I click on this, we've got the factor, and this is the one that. Oop, selecting the wrong thing there. It's always a 
that Hassel selected it. So you can see I'm changing it. You see the factors really going up and down like crazy. If we put it back to zero, it's back to normal. Now, what I need to do next, I need to parent it because if I move the ball, what happens? If I just move the timer around, you can see the ball goes, but the handle stays here. If I were to squash it, you can see it's squashing based on its points over here and not the ball base, which is really not what I want to happen. So I'm going to bring the ball back down and we're going to get this handle to follow the ball. To do that, we've got to parent it. So the best way to think of it is to get it in the right order. Think of the handle as a child and, whether, and it's got to follow the parent being the ball. So I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard, select the handle, hold shift on the keyboard then select the ball. So that the ball is the main selector here. You can go to edit and press parent or P on your keyboard. You can hold shift and P to unparent it but I'm just going to parent it now. So now if I drag this timer along we can see that this handle is moving with the ball and it'll still squash Ooh, can I pull this out? It's not Ooh. let's do it by the factor here. For some reason the mine's acting up a bit, so There we go, I've got a bit more control. So you can see that it is squashing at the base of the ball no matter where the ball travels. So that's exactly what I want. So I'll put that back to zero. So now we've got the squash set up. We could manually put the keys in ourselves, but there is another way of doing this. It's a much easier way of doing this, and that's using set driven keys. I absolutely love set driven keys because they you can use them for all different kinds of things. You're you're programming an animation into this. That's what centering keys is all about. Just gonna hold shift and A so we can zoom into all the places. Zoom in a bit here. And zoom in a tiny bit of the side there. I'm probably gonna use the side one, the front one, maybe the top. I'm gonna use all these views for this next bit. So we're gonna bring our ball back down to zero. And what we are going to do, I'm going to do a set drawing key. We've got to set it all up first and say which part is driving which item. So, for instance, if a wheel was going forward, its rotation was based on how the car's moving forward. It'll become clear as we get along with this. So, to start off with, I'm going to select the ball. We're going to go into Animate and Set Drawing Key Set. Yep, the window snapped on along here, so I'm just going to pull this to the side. There we go, that's a bit better. So what we've got here, we've got a new window, and this is asking which part, which element is going to be the driver driving the movement, or changing the item, and which part is going to be the driven that's going to be affected by the driver. So I want the squash to be affected by the ball going up and down. So I'm going to click load driver with my ball selected, so that's the driver, and it's Y, translate Y, it going up and down is going to cause the effect, cause the squash effect. And then next, this is a bit of a tricky part, trying to click on the handle, and I'm going to click on the squash input here to make sure I get the, I can access the factor. Click on load driven, and here we've got ball and squash, squash I want, and factor. And that's all you've got to do. You've got to do not get rid of this window, otherwise you're going to have to do this setup again. But there you go, we've got the setup done here. The only button we'll need to know, we want to use, is the key one. We key in the movement. So when the ball's on the ground, I'm just going to click on this and just, just give it a bit of a squash. Zoom in a bit here. Just I'm not going to make it too. Oop. 
yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, I'm going to put this to my 0 0.4. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice squash there. So with that, I can press key on here. So it's keyed in that squash. And when it goes, I'm going to click on 30. So that's the time when it's in the hoop. So let's press F so I can zoom into there. So when it's in F, I want it to be stretched out. So I'm going to pull on this handle. Just stretch this ball. It's going to be nice and long, so it's really stretched out. It's really going for it. And I'm going to put this to 0 0.8. Yeah, that's a nice round, round number. And I'm going to key in this animation. And that's all you need to do. So I'm just going to pull the timeline, select this window. And you can see, boing, it stretches here. And then down and up and down and that's it all by pressing the key twice is keyed in this movement so if I'm quite happy with this I can click on close we can also edit this animation using the graph editor and that's what I'm going to be doing right now so there we go click on graph editor there's always this little button with the graph here and now you can see we've got a few more selectors. We've got the bouncing. We also have this little guy down here, which is our squash. Now, one thing I want to do is just, as you can see, with the time, it sort of drags on there, moves, and then drags slowly there. I want it to have a bit more of a curve to this. So this is the point where you can just play around with this. I'm just going to try this curve and just drag this. Oh, I, I do like that. Squash, boing, 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 boing. You have to set. You have to do the sound effects whenever you do this. It really helps with the animation. And there you go. That is, the, that is one way of really emphasizing your animation. Another good thing when you are editing animation, so you're taking out keyframes and editing them, you're really reducing the number of silly keyframes, I call them. So remember the ball? We've only got those two keyframes, and we got rid of the rest of them it really helps you get rid of useless data which will later on especially with complex animations muck things up and there you go you've got your own animation so what I'm going to do I'm going to deselect it I'm going to go into get rid of the graph I'm going to go to show and where are we handles that's not it you always forget which things are what because they do at dynamic, let's see, deformers, that's what I wanted. So get rid of that, so now I can just watch my animation, and there we go. Now for the first animation, this is really not bad. You have I'm just going to just twist this around a little bit. It's a bit slow when you've got the animation on. Hmm. Yeah, it does hit the ground, so that's one thing you've got to be careful of. It does what it's supposed to. Always take the moment to look at your animation in different angles and just ask yourself, does it work? And for me, yes, it does. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and there'll be many more coming in the future just going over basic things like more keyframing using joints adding models maybe a little something about editing your models and things like that so hope you enjoyed it <laughs>